Hello everyone! In this video I'd like to give you an overview on the psychology of negotiations and introduce you to our newly developed framework called resource-oriented negotiations. Negotiations take place whenever people try to solve social conflicts through communication. However, as you might have already observed, there are different types of conflicts. For instance, social conflicts can revolve around social norms, ethical beliefs or moral views. These types of conflicts are called value conflicts. Other social conflicts are based on conflicting interests. These so-called conflicts of interests revolve around the exchange, the contribution and the distribution of interest-relevant resources, such as money, labor, fresh water or the usage of a car. In this course, you will learn a lot about conflict of interest and the inherent interest-relevant resources. Of course, value conflicts also play a crucial role when people negotiate the commons. Thus, later on in this course, you will also reflect psychological resources that help people to deal with their conflicting ethical beliefs or social norms. Therefore, you will learn more about the role of respect, trust or identities in resolving social conflicts through negotiations. But let's start with negotiations on conflict of interest and the inherent interest relevant resources. Please take a moment and think about this. When did you last time negotiate a conflict of interest and what type of resources were involved in these negotiations? We all conduct negotiations almost every day, often without actually noticing it. On an informal level, we negotiate with our family on the destination for our next holiday trip, with our partner about housekeeping duties or with our children on their bad times. On a more formal level, we negotiate with our boss about our salary or with the taxi driver about the fare. As you may have noticed, in many of these examples, we negotiate the exchange of privately owned resources. These types of negotiations are called transaction negotiations. However, in this online course, you will learn more about the psychological processes and two other types of negotiations that are very important in the context of commons. In negotiations on shared resources, we are typically faced with two fundamental types of questions. First, to what extent will each party contribute resources to commons? And second, how are resources of commons distributed between these parties? In psychology, we call these two types of negotiations contribution and distribution negotiations. Let me give you an example. When neighbors of a small community start to negotiate on the creation of a commonly used playground, we have an instance of a contribution negotiation. As you might assume, when residents of an apartment building negotiate on the use of a community garden, we have an instance of a distribution negotiation. Of course, in negotiations on commons, you will often find a mixture of both types of negotiations. But what are the means to solve conflict of interest through negotiations in the context of commons? At its heart, conflict of interests revolve around material and immaterial resources, and as a matter of fact, conflict of interests in the context of commons rely on the sharing of resources. So let's take a closer look at commons and the corresponding resources. From a psychological perspective, resources in negotiation address the parties' underlying concerns, motives and interests. For instance, when a group of people negotiate on the sharing of a community garden, they may discuss the creation, maintenance and utilization of this garden for many different reasons. The commonly shared garden may serve various motives and interests such as people's need for recreation, cultivation, affiliation, activity or being around nature. In a similar way, sharing resources such as water or an open online course may also affect various types of human interests and needs. In light of the psychological perspective on negotiations, we define resources as tangible and intangible elements in social conflict that advance one or more parties' interests and thus need to be considered to reach sustainable agreements. In negotiations on commons, people are challenged to contribute and distribute resources, so each individual's interests are affected by the negotiation of resources. From this perspective, resources are the root of conflict of interests. 
At the same time, resources are powerful means to resolve social conflicts. However, to utilize resources for conflict resolution, you need to gain a deeper understanding of each party's underlying interests. In other words, you have to act as a psychologist in analyzing the other party's needs and motives. Using a psychological perspective on negotiations, you may explore new ways to strategically deal with resources and negotiations on commons. In the library, you will find a variety of papers and materials dealing with human needs, motives and interests. Moreover, you will find several interesting papers and book sections on conflict of interest and how the understanding of each party's interests may help to find mutual satisfying agreements and negotiations. These materials will certainly help you to understand the importance of resources. This will lead to informed discussions about human motives and needs and social conflicts of commons, both within your team as well as within the whole community of this MOOC.